So now that we've introduced this idea of randomness uh, as an important element of the sampling process, uh, let's take a look at some specific sampling methods and we can see how this is actually applied um, in specific scenarios. So the, the first method here is called stratified sampling. This, this is a method you, you could use when your population um, breaks down kind of naturally into categories. For example, in, in this scenario, um, a pollster is doing some kind of political poll, right, political surveying. And when, when you're talking about politics, you know, it, it's natural to break people down by party. To say, for example, I'm going to focus on Democrats versus Republicans. Right, so then the person, you know, in this scenario, he samples 100 people from each group. Now, when you're doing this kind of study, it's important that you avoid both underrepresenting and overrepresenting specific groups. For example, uh, when selecting the groups, you have to make sure that they don't have any overlap, which could cause overrepresentation, and that you don't accidentally omit any groups, which would cause um, both underrepresentation of the omitted group and overrepresentation of the groups that were included. So, in this case, for example, the pollster neglected to include independent voters who, you know, in, in some districts, could be large enough uh, to sway the results. Now, it's also important that the number of people selected from each group has to be proportional to their size in the population as a whole. So, for example, the approach this person used, taking 100 people, uh, 100 Democrats, and 100 Republicans, that's making an assumption that each group makes up 50% of the entire population. If the ratio was closer to, say, 55% uh, and 35%, right, then in, in order to maintain the same proportion of the sample as exists in the population, you would need um, let's see, we're, we're looking for 200 people total, so 55% of 200 would be 110 Democrats, 35% of 200 would be 70 Republicans, and the remaining 20 would come from that group of independents. Now, a cluster sample is similar to a stratified sample, and it's effective in situations where, for example, it's difficult to sample every group within a population. So in this scenario, for example, it could be prohibitively difficult to make arrangements to travel to every nursing school in a city. So instead, uh, the, po the, the researcher is going to go to select nursing schools uh, and just survey the people there. So now when using this method, it's important to select clusters that are representative of the population. In other words, while the clusters here may be different sizes, some small and some large, right? Internally, it's a reasonable assumption that the nursing students at all of the schools will be reasonably similar, right? Nursing students at school A are going to be similar to the nursing students in school B versus school C and so on. So you can pick the ones that you want. You can pick um, a random selection of schools and then just go to those schools and do your surveying. Now, in contrast, right, zip codes. I see, I see students try to pick this a lot. Zip codes do kind of naturally break up uh, a geographic region. However, they're a poor choice for clusters because the population of zip codes tend to be unique. For example, if every zip code you picked to survey had a rural population, right, in, in contrast with urban populations, then urban voters wouldn't have any representation in your results, and the results would be heavily skewed against 
their opinions. Okay, so like I said, these these two are very similar. So I, I want to explicitly kind of contrast them here so you can see um, how to distinguish between the two. In a stratified sample, the strata can have different characteristics, right? I, I like to use high schools here, right? We could use 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grades, right? Each strata is very different from all the others, and that's okay, right? Because in the end, we have to pick representatives from each one. Now, cluster, clusters are the opposite. Right? We're in a stratified sample. All the strata can have different, very unique characteristics. In a cluster sample, all the clusters have to be the same. Right? And then we, we pick just a few of those clusters. We might pick this one and this one and ignore the other three. Right? And just sample from those two. We're again, in contrast, when we're talking about a stratified sample, you have to select from every strata. So in the next two lectures, we're going to kind of continue our trend here. Uh, we're going to talk about two more types of sampling methods. We're going to look at systematic sampling and convenience sampling.